All right, welcome back to the Praxis podcast, your career bound by Praxis. Excited to uh, get another one out there today. Um, Mitchell and I were thinking about what we wanted to talk about today, and here we have a topic that we've run or that he's run in the playbook um, newsletter before. So, Mitchell, I'll go ahead and ask you to talk a little bit about this, and really, you could just answer the question: um, why you should move? Why should you move away from home? Yeah, very. Uh, it, it, it's a somewhat biased question, <laughs> you know, like, like um, I'm already suggesting with the question that you should, you should move away from home. I think it's, you know, there's a variety of different reasons why I think it's, it's a good thing when you're in the early innings of your career. And I think that, you know, naturally we can talk about some of the, the, the negatives as well and some of the challenges to be overcome. But uh, when it all boils down to it, I think, you know, everybody at the start of their career, they're kind of on this own journey. And I think one of the, several of the critical things that you need to do on that journey, um, you need to develop independence. You need to forge your own identity. You need to um, develop. You need to develop real world evidence of your independence and of your ability to handle hard things and navigate the challenges of life as an in individual agent, as an adult on your own. Those are like kind of the essential reasons. I think the the um, strong advantageous reason uh, reasons are, you know, financial opportunity, career opportunities. Um, those are low hanging fruit. A a, a big, um, a bigger, more important reason in that same arena is network. Uh, I'm not suggesting you just have to move to cities in necessarily, but like you should move. There's this idea that you should go, you know, kind of like pervasive uh, belief that everybody should go to college after high school. I think part of the same um, same reason why I think you should move away kind of plays into that that belief is that you can go to this place and you're going to walk out four years later. And you're going to have everything figured out and you're going to have your whole life laid out in front of you. All the things you want are just going to happen. That's not really how college works, but that's that's kind of like part of the fairy tale belief of it. Okay. I think a more effective way is like, go, go move to a place where people are working on the thing that you want to be working on. Uh, the idea you're most excited by. Um, there are hubs for those things in the world. Uh, whatever it is you're interested in, there's probably a hub, a physical hub of people congregated around that idea. You want to work in startups? Silicon Valley used to be the place. Now there's different cities where there's, you know, great opportunities um, all over the country, you know, cities like Austin, Texas. Miami, uh, Salt Lake City, Nashville, um, Boston, you know, all of the popular ones, San Francisco still has some, um, you know, New York. Uh, there are tech hubs all over. You want to work in um, like leading edge, uh, hard tech manufacturing or energy or defense tech, go move to uh, El Segundo, California right now. There's like all sorts of cool innovation and hard tech happening right there, uh, right now. And tons of companies that are building just cool stuff. And a ton of people have moved there to be around other people that are building cool stuff in that same space. Um, you could go on and on and on with different examples. But uh, anyway, why is this an important thing is in the early end of your career, when you're trying to gain an advantage, you're trying to like, you know, advance forward. I think, you know, again, there's this misconception that college is the way to do it. You go to this, not just place, but this institution, and they give you all of the things that you need or that you lack. And then uh, on the other side of it, your life is perfect. That's not really how it works. Really, the the, the fundamentals of like being able to uh, take ownership over your career and have success, you know, it's your ability to... Um, it's your ability to create value and your ability to convince other people of the value you can create. So, you know, you need to build skills, you need to get experience, you need to build a network of people who can vouch for you or who can open up opportunities for you, people you can learn from quicker. Um, that network, you know, it's not just transactional, it's people that can actually push you to, to be better on your journey, who can help you get there, who can open doors for you. And, and again, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to like, Fast forward here is if you do all these things right, which I think you can do in an accelerated manner by moving away from home, developing independence, go planting yourself in, in soil where you're surrounded by other people that are going to push you to be better. And if you do that in the early innings of your career, 
you're going to develop a massive amount of leverage, um, skills, experience, network, credibility, um, that then you can then leverage to make a decision about what you want to do. Um, you know, for that may mean I want to move back home. Maybe that means I want to move off the grid. I want to go homestead. Maybe that means like, you know, I want to just have the agency to um, be a digital nomad and and move around. Yeah. Or I, I want to be able to live in different places, you know, different seasonally, whatever the case is. If you go learn how to create value, you build the skill set, the network and all of these things, it's going to give you the leverage to have more agency over those decisions in a way that you can arbitrage regardless of where you live. You can still command awesome financial uh, opportunities, awesome career opportunities, um, and and you you can do that without being beholden to sort of the limitations of your you know your geography, which I think is is something yeah. that um, is very unique to our generation. And past generations did not have the same opportunities that we have, and I think it's something that people don't. Uh, it's not as it's not. People don't recognize how the average person doesn't recognize the unique advantage this this presents. And I think it's something the more and more people can realize this unique opportunity of going and building this credibility and then like arbitraging, um, just the more agency and freedom people have as they think about designing their lives and careers the way they want to be. Yeah. I mean, even when I when I look back and it's only been I'm still early, but I didn't move away and I like if I if I could go back, I probably would. Now I'm grateful for how my life has panned out in so many ways. So I wouldn't like. It's kind of like a you can't really play that game. Like, cause if you change one thing, like I don't know, it's kind of like the like the concept of like a butterfly effect. Like it doesn't really work like that. But I definitely would. I sometimes think like it would have been, it would have been much better in in a lot of ways if I had moved away for even just for a bit. Like, cause I went to college for a year, and then and then when I after that year I decided to do practice. But in that year, like I wasn't in a city i was in a small pennsylvania town going to a college now it was also 2020 2021 so it was pretty like crappy like time period to be there um but also like i wasn't uh i wasn't going and like having those real independent experiences because i was in this institution and i'm not like looking to focus on that part of it right now but um had i had i had i known about praxis earlier i definitely think i would have i would have uh i at least would have heavily considered it but even going forward like like fast forward here i would have i think it would have benefited greatly even if i went and lived just like right outside of the city for like a year just to like be able to interact with people and like have not a lot of obligations and um pretty much be like okay like i'm responsible for myself and figuring out like what i'm gonna eat and where i'm gonna sleep and basically i can go like get stack up a ton of cool experiences and like had i known that or what that would have looked like or i had a better concept of that it would have it would have been such a just awesome way to start out and learn things on the fly um so i definitely think it's i definitely think it's important i always get excited for other people when i see like they're moving or doing something like that like it's just like like when uh even like when charlie that's this is a whole other topic like getting excited for people like being married having a kid i don't have the same well i guess some would argue i do but i i would say i don't have the same like i can't take as many risks because i'm responsible for other people actually so like when charlie westerman launched his his business i was so excited for him because i was like man like i wish i could launch a business right now like that that sounds like a blast but like those kinds of opportunities and stuff it's so important to take take advantage of that early in your career when you can when they come across um but as far as opportunities go i think it's such a it's so prevalent you see it out there right like the next big thing or like a fad a fad career path or drop shipping or you know like going and like you could you could make you know you could do amazon kdp book printing which is like all fine like there's nothing wrong with any of those things but i think sometimes especially my generation sees these things and it's like oh i gotta go do one of those things one of those if i want to make a lot of money or if i want to have a lot of success but it's not really true we were just talking about this what what are your thoughts around that idea like hey like you those things are fine but there's all these old-fashioned kind of like tried and true business paths career paths that if you just like put your head down and work and make the right decisions while you do that you can see some of the you can see some crazy success there so what what are your <laughs> thoughts what are your thoughts on that yeah well so so this this definitely 
plays into the idea of moving from home. And I'll, I'll just caveat like the whole deal, like for every, you know, every piece of advice, there's always exceptions where, you know, maybe there's, there's other paths that, um, you know, there's still great ways. Like you, you stay, stay around where you grew up and you can build an awesome life and career. Maybe that's your highest aspiration. It's like, I want to find a way to make it work here and still not, you know, reach a financial ceiling. Um, you know, I'm from the middle of nowhere, like town of, 55,000 people, mostly blue collar, agricultural, some military, some medical. And then it's like, you know, a bunch of insurance agents. It's like a very blue collar uh, place. And so, you know, when I was growing up, there was always this kind of like unspoken, unspoken truth that if you wanted to make anything of yourself, you're going to move away from home. And you're going to go move to a city, you're going to go to college, you're going to get a white collar career, and then you're never going to come back. And I think that I felt that pressure growing up is like, opportunity exists somewhere else. It doesn't exist here. Like, this isn't a place that I can, I can build things. And, and now that I have so much more lived experience and perspective, and, and actual like career, uh, career, career context, I realize like, there are so many cool business opportunities here that like would not have required moving away from home. So in the context of your, your question, like I'm going to reframe it a little bit. I'm going to say like, what what's the ideal, what are some ideal ways that you could go, you know, build your uh, yeah. early career, navigate those early decisions. If you know, you're entrepreneurial, you want to have cool opportunities. You know, I just think about like, what would I do differently? Um, First and foremost, I would have changed the targets. I wouldn't have been thinking about like success along the academic dimensions, like the paths through academia. I would have, I would have looked for what's a way for me to have a growth curve like this, you know, like the hockey stick growth curve, personally, professionally, financially. And if I could go back and like design the perfect life, like I would have done something like at 16 years old, started a lawn business, you know, something that. I could have done as a 16 year old yeah. um, and done at a high level and increase my earnings and run that until I was like probably 20. And like, hopefully my parents would have let me live at home and, you know, save, save money during that time and just like stacked up cash and probably would have like started a Christmas light business seasonally, or maybe a power washing business, like would have started some businesses where, there were things that weren't super capital intensive, but they're a way for me to like dip my toe into the world of entrepreneurship, get some experience running my own business, doing things that didn't require like this massive, um, massive, like technical skill, um, something that I could learn and, and like I could get, get better and build like a, a good business around um, for myself. And I would have like prioritized getting that experience, building up a solid financial reserve, and then probably trying to sell that business. And then gone and tried to find the coolest opportunity to go work directly under a CEO, a founder, a, you know, a, a small business owner who's built some kind of like you know, massive thing, like a good example of this is like going and finding a, um, a business owner who's gotten into the franchise space and gone from like a couple locations to like 40, like that, yeah. that'd be like such a cool early career opportunities. Like just go work for that, that person, um, or their office, like literally any way you can get your foot in the door. And again, that, that first step I mentioned is critical is you focus first on getting some real world experience yourself, building something for yourself, uh, saving some money and then, you know, selling that business that you built. So then you have this windfall and then you can afford to go work for free or dirt treat cheap, which gives you a lot more leverage to go um, convince other people to hire you. Okay. So what, what is that actually, you know, what, what is that ultimately leading to? Like, I think, I think there are so many cool opportunities that we don't we don't even pay attention to. Uh, part of this is because people just don't know they exist. Part of it is because we we're we're somewhat programmed from a young age to look at these other things that are easier to identify, like the tried and true 
career paths that college spit people into. So you either yeah. go to the trades or the military or go to college and get a, uh, you know, become a doctor, a lawyer or a white collar career person, laptop worker, cubicle farm worker, cubicle farmer. Um, and like, those are the career paths that people know. Yeah. They don't realize that there's all these other cool things. And okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll bring this back. So it's like, it's not just about entrepreneurship. That's where I think there are a lot of young adults who will get fired up about cool opportunities like I just laid out. But there are so many ways to to make great money and build an awesome life that don't require all the glitz and glamour. Like, you know, going and working at a bank and becoming a loan officer and you know, working your way up in, in that corporate environment. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something where you're trading time for money. Yeah. You're building an awesome network though. You're building a tangible skill set. Um, your the income and earnings are going to be there eventually. Um, I would say, um, starting in sales doesn't have to be something sexy like tech sales. It could literally be any, any flavor variety of sales, go sell real estate, go, you know, go work in uh, mortgage lending, go, do door to door sales, go do, um, go do like, um, supply sales for like electrical contracting or home builders or anything like that. Like go find a, a, a cool market that you're somewhat excited by. Go do tool sales. You know, I've, I've, I've known plenty of people who've gone and worked for like a black and Decker or yeah. Milwaukee tool or something like that. But like you can, there, there are career paths out there that I think most people might not see as glamorous, but they're honestly a, an awesome career path to make the kind of money that constitutes freedom, agency, ownership, and like all the things a lot of people want, but they don't, they just totally rule out those paths because they're not the like sexy things or the like path through college that most people are programmed to, to chase after. Yeah. How much of that too, do you think is just about perspective? I think I've been I've been reflecting on that lately. Like sometimes I'm mean, people just in general, but especially like in those young stages when you've been fed all these ideas, we get like there's such a we've talked about status before, but you get like you put these things, you put all of these different paths in in buckets, and it's kind of like oh, this is like the like the super sexy path, like really high qual high status, high earnings, and these are like eh, you know these they're like kind of good like maybe some good money but not as exciting and then these are bad like i don't i would never want to associate with those careers but it's kind of like your perspective really matters because if you even if you have like let's say you even have a job that you don't like day to day but you're kind of like okay but here's my goal and the, these three aspects of this job help me to get to that goal i'm making some money so i can save there's this component of this that's sales so i can kind of track my metric and document that and tell that story so that i can go look for a sales job i'm maybe more excited about like i feel like a ton of it has to do with perspective i like and that's something you could change right away it might take some work but if you just say like i'm gonna have a positive outlook on my current situation i'm gonna set some clear goals and see how i can take things from my current situation to move me towards those goals that's a major shift and then i feel like when you're thinking just more positively, you're going to be more open to opportunities. And then you're going to be more, you're also going to be a more exciting person for a hiring manager or for us. Like if you, you might meet somebody like a small business owner, like, Oh, like, like you're great. Like this is what you're doing. Like, I would, I mean, do you have any interest in coming and working in XYZ field? I feel like just shifting your mindset there is, is so major. I don't know. You've worked with, you know, hundreds of, of young adults in practice over the last several years. And I, I wonder like how much of that has been such a, such a major factor in, in people's success, but also in just like their day to day, how they're doing is the, how much of, how much of that is their mindset? Yeah. I mean, perspective is, is a big thing. I think that that perspective kind of flows. We talked about this in a previous episode. It's like this idea of mimetic desire. Like I have this perspective of like what I think is a good job or a good career or like the income targets I should aim for. And I want those because that's what I think other people want. And even if I, even if I'm not re really sure if I, I want it, it's very hard to shirk off this perceived influence of what I think other people value. And then like, try not to value that, those same things myself in the same way. And that, that sounds, sounds a little bit fu fuzzy, but break, let me break it down. And like, what does that actually mean when it comes to like thinking about your career decisions? 
if all of your friends and all of your family think that going to college is the right thing to do and that the things that you should aim for in life are you go get a college degree, you go get a safe corporate job, you climb, you stay with the same company forever. You just climb, you know, you climb the ranks at that company. You just put 20%, you know, you max out your uh, 401k for the rest of your life until you're 65 or 67. And then you retire. And like, that's what constitutes like the right foundation to a good life. And outside of that, you know, you, here's how your life looks. You know, you have a house, you have two cars, you have 2.3 kids, you go to church, you're, uh, <laughs> you know, involved in your community. And like, that's the, that's, that's the American dream. And everybody in your sphere of influence, that's exactly what they believe. And they all are reinforcing that belief. It's going to be very hard for you not to adopt that same set of beliefs for your, for your you know, for your life and future. So again, this is part of the reason why I think moving away from home can be beneficial is, is I'm not saying that that set of beliefs your friends and family's ha family has is wrong. That is absolutely the farthest thing from what I'm saying. Like most cases, like as you get older, you're probably going to appreciate the values that your parents raise you yeah. with and, and those things even more. But what I am saying is that your life is a very long time. And when you're young, it's the best time to go try things and make mistakes because it's, it's your, it's your peak opportunity to go and learn things. And it's also really critical for you to figure out what it is, is important to you and how you want your life to be and like begin to build this framework for your own identity. Um, and, and understand, you know, what are the values that are important to you? How, how, are, how do you want your life to look? How do you want your career to look? How, you know, what level of agency it's important for you to do that when you're young, because it's only going to get harder over time. So anyway, that's why um, I, I think like moving away from home and going and like testing out a bunch of different things, or maybe looking at jobs that, you know, maybe are outside of that or, or prioritizing experiences that maybe will take you somewhere uh, down an interesting path. Maybe you, you didn't previously consider like that's, it's so valuable when you're young because that perspective change can open up all sorts of other possibilities. Okay. And I got that out of the way. Let's talk a little bit more about what perspective actually means, how, how it's actually important. So a lot of the things that I think people end up aiming for, um, and again, I'm speaking with broad strokes here, but a lot of things, you know, people end up aiming for, they're based on this like fake scoreboard. So it's the, the things that we can see, um, you know, there's the anecdote of like the, the uh, guy in the Range Rover with a Rolex and in a nice suit pulling up to the stoplight next to the, you know, the guy in old Navy clothes and a beat up old Toyota Camry with 200,000 miles. And, you know, they look over at each other and the guy in the Range Rover kind of smirks and like is a little bit condescending because the, you know, the guy next to him looks poor and the guy in the, the Toyota Camry looks at the other guy and he's like, you know, a little bit envious, but at the same time, he's like content. And what, you know, what all the people on the, pa all the passer buyers look by and they're like, oh, look, there's this rich guy. And there's just this like, you know, NPC, this like ordinary dude out there. Well, what pe the average pe people can't see is like this stuff, this, this scenario is happening all over the United States right now is there's this, um, you know, this guy with all these fancy things who's probably in debt up to his eyeballs, is living paycheck to paycheck, even though he has a really high income. And his whole life is is somewhat of a mirage. And there's this other dude who's like prioritized the things that are important to him, like stability, um, financial independence, his family and relationships, and like taking pride in what he does and like building a good life. And his net worth is probably way higher. He probably doesn't have debt, even though he's driving an old beat up car. He doesn't care. He's like content with his life. Yeah. And he's, he's like in a much stronger position and has much more agency over his life than the person who looks like they have it, they have it all. I think that is an important piece of perspective as people think about the career paths that they want to pursue is like, what are you actually looking for? Are you looking for the things that look good to the X, you know, to the, to the others, to the outsiders, like yeah. the external, um, the external things like status, uh, perceived wealth, even if it's not real, um, perceived 
excitement, glamour, glitz, all that kind of stuff. Uh, like I'm going on all these cool trips all the time. I'm using my credit card and racking up debt to do it. Or like you have agency over your life because you're making positive decisions that compound in a, in a powerful way over time. Yeah. Um, that, that's the perspective I think most people don't lack because we don't talk about our careers in that way of like, how do you take agency over them? We talk more in terms of like what it means for your income and lifetime earning potential. Um, the, we talk about like, you know, credentials versus non-credentials. We talk about like you work in white collar, blue collar, but we don't really talk about like finding your purpose, finding meaning, um, building a life and career that allows you to take ag agency and then be a blessing to your friends and family and like li live out your purpose. Um, cause those things are a lot more abstract and they're much harder to break down to like, what does it actually mean as I'm making decisions in my day to day? Like, again, like I'm talking in abstract, but like, I think this, these are important parts of perspective that are often left out of the equation. Yeah. Well, I think it's also just like reframing the whole way not just that you think about life that's a very broad statement but reframing the whole way you think about this stage of life like you touched on it, like the idea you're gonna graduate high school you're gonna go to college because that's a ticket to like this high high value life and you're gonna that's the path you're gonna be on and, and that's a good path because you're gonna be able to be in this whole world this whole camp of like you know maxing out your 401k being at climbing the la corporate ladder at this company for your whole career and like that's that one path but it's kind of like just reframing how you think about that stage of life so like even just saying you're you're in high school you're close to graduation let's say like you're junior senior 17 16 to 18 and it's it's not just about like okay like how do i get to that point or like how do i what it's not even just about what do i do next it's what do i what do i care about like what and what even if i don't know what i care about right now like and i don't know what i'm gonna care about in a few years like as far as day to day and like you know, where I'm going to be at relation, relationship wise, family wise, but like, what matters to me? Like, what kind of impact do I want to have? What does it mean? We've talked about this, like, what does it mean to be? What does wealth look like to me? What does success look like to me? I think if young people in general, if that's if, if they're encouraged to ask those kinds of questions, they're going to be able to, they're going to be able to, like, set themselves on paths that actually make sense. So they're going to feel they're going to feel confident in their decisions, too. It's going to be like, oh, I didn't imagine if the majority of like, 16 to 18 or just like recent high school graduates were thinking like yeah i actually feel confident about the decision i made to do this post graduation because i thought about my values and i care about these these three things most and this path puts me as close as possible to those things puts me around the right people in the right in the right rooms um i'm working the right jobs i'm i'm learning the right things like there would be so much I don't know. I feel like that would there would it would be so valuable. I mean, that's what we're doing here, right? I mean, that's why we care about that. But I I think like asking the right questions ha changes changes everything about the path you go on. And you're not just you're not just living on autopilot. You're not just going into places because like that's just what like the crowd was doing, and it was kind of like, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to go here. Yeah, totally. And I, this is when I I say I'm long on Gen Z so much is like I, I think it's been an inter interesting generational shift. You know, even a matter of a handful of years here where like it, it, I've seen polls and, and, and studies on this already, like things that younger generations value when it comes to their career, or, you know, the, what they value when they're looking at career opportunities, it, it, you know, the things they're looking for in the workplace. And it's like younger generations place so much more um, weight on working for an organization or working in a career path or building a business or like spending their time doing things that they feel like are meaningful, have high impact, are aligned with their values and financial, you know, the financial thing is still a strong consideration in younger generations too, but these other things are way higher than in previous generations. Like, you know, millennials and older Gen X and definitely like baby boomers, like, that those weren't metrics that they they were worried about. Like, I'm going to go work for you know X Y Z corporation. I'm not worried about am I you know solving world hunger. I'm not worried about meaning. I'm like trying to put food on the table and support my family. And like, I'm gonna I'm not worried about job hopping or anything like that. I'm gonna like go work for this corporation forever. It's gonna all work out. Yeah. Younger generations, I think, have taken 
so much more agency. It, well, they're at least idyllic about the lifestyle that they want. I think that the, the delusion is like how they go about trying to achieve the things, the preferences that they say are important to them. Um, and, and that's where I think there's, there's tons of opportunity for improvement and for education, uh, for the average young adult is you don't have a problem with what you think is important. Okay. If anything, like your commitment to your own values and like finding a way to pursue those things, older generations are going to call you entitled. They're going to laugh at like your desire to work on important stuff and have meaning and make an impact, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. There's just, just you know, always a generational rip. There's not a problem with, with the way you're thinking about the world right now. There is likely a, 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 a problem with the way you're going about executing, trying to design your life in that way, especially if you're outsourcing that process to other things like, okay, I know I want to work on something impactful. I want to work on something that's meaningful and brings me fulfillment and it's a good job. Okay. If you're, if that's like high priority for you, and then your first decision is go take on six figures of student debt to spend the next four years in college, um, hoping that that is going to help you on your path. What you've done is like you've put yourself in a in a position where you you've decreased your leverage. So now you have to you you can't prioritize those things. You have to prioritize going and taking any job. So like the way people go about making these first decisions is often at odds with the things that they think are important because the way they're executing these decisions aren't things aren't aren't actions that are increasing their agency or leverage in fact in many cases they're decreasing them and it's not just student debt but it's you're wasting 4 years that you could have been working and gaining meaningful experience you're you're not getting that work experience and so you're now at a disadvantage 4 years from now when you're starting yeah. to look for job opportunities um, you weren't earning money. And so not only are you in student debt, but you don't have any kind of savings or buffers. And so like, you got to start making money quickly. You, you built a network around people that were so, same age rather than people that were farther ahead of you, um, working on cool things. And like, if instead you were like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to think about what's important to me, the things I'm interested in, and I'm only going to make it decisions that increase my agency or my leverage. Okay. What are things that I can do to do that? And, and ultimately, what does that mean? It's like increases my probability of being able to have the type of life and career opportunities I want. Okay. Well, you would probably, rather than taking on student debt, you would probably prioritize um, smart financial foundation. So having money in the bank rather than debt. Um, well, how are you going to do that? Probably by getting some work experience. That work experience is also going to be beneficial because in general, you're going to begin to build skills. You're going to earn some money that you can save. That's going to open up opportunities for you as well. Even if it's, you know, you have to take some jobs that aren't things that make you feel like you're saving the world or making yeah. a big impact in the short term. You know, if over the next few years you prioritize the right things, you're going to have so many more options. Even over the next few years, you know, a few years from now, you're going to expand your, your option set. And I think, you know, most people are making decisions that decrease their option set over time, um, ho thinking wrongly that those decisions, they're actually expanding their option set. And in reality, like over time, they're trading away agency. And so their ability to maneuver in the direction of their ideals and like what they actually want diminishes over time rather yeah. than like increases. And that's that's one of the great lies I think most people are told growing up and in the government school system is like, yeah, you got to go do these things because this is the path. Well, it's certainly a path to something, but it's typically not the path to the things most people actually want. Yeah. You know, it kind of makes me think about some, something I, I've been reflecting on for myself as far as habits go. Like if I have a, if I have a goal or not even just a goal, but like, let's say, I, I guess, yeah, a goal. Like, I, I want to start reading more or I, I want to start, mm -hmm. like, consuming, like, valuable content. I don't want to, I don't want to doom scroll or I don't want to, I want to be able to be ingesting good information. I want to be learning. I want to, even if it's something like I want to work out more, I, I think it's a, just a human tendency, but I'm curious to hear in your experience what it's been like for you and what you've seen just working with people for years. Like, I think we have this thing that we tell ourselves like oh, I'm going to wait until like it feels right or I'm going to wait until like I think like I'm ready for this 
and that's with any kind of decision, but when it comes to habits, I think in my experience, it's been more important to just go and start doing things like things that I know are attainable that I can just start doing, just start doing them. And then I can keep, I can iterate and kind of test things and see what's working. So that's kind of the build up to the question of in your experience, what is it, what is it, what has it been like in your own life? For, like waiting to start a habit or just starting it, even when it doesn't feel right. And what, what's been more successful and what have you seen across the board working with, you know, people in practice? That's a difficult question and that requires, I think, a little bit of unpacking. Okay, so maybe this is unique to me, but I'm, you know, interested to see if this is your experience as well. So typically when I'm thinking about like starting a habit, you know, or starting something, it's it's typically not the habit really that I'm thinking about. There's some like version of myself that I'm trying to manifest. So I want to read more. It's because like, one, I just genuinely think that that is a good thing, a productive thing for me to continue to be reading. And typically underneath that, it's like not just reading anything, but reading books that expand my mind and like maybe are useful and help me become, you know, more educated about either a specific topic I'm interested in or just, you know, things that are somewhat um, adjacent to um, things that are interesting to me. You know, yeah. whether it's like classical literature or, you know, a book on copywriting or book on finance or some, you know, business book, something like that. Like I'm trying to manifest a better version of myself. And like, that's what I have in mind. And so it's like, I think reading is like, I should read more books because that's ultimately what's going to help me get to this thing. And so I'm not thinking about, I should start a reading habit, just like, I should probably read more. Um, I should probably consume more content. Um, and how, how do I do that? So it's like, okay, I'm going to try and find some time to read every single day. Uh, maybe that means that I'm going to do some audiobooks, you know, uh, do, while I'm working out, um, or find some podcasts that are interesting to me while I'm working out or something. When I have some free time, when I go on my afternoon walks, uh, maybe I'm going to wake up, I'm going to try to wake up 30 minutes earlier every day and like carve that time out for reading or something like that. Um, but anyway, like when I think about those habits, it's typically, there's some other thing that I'm trying to do other than just the, 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 the specific action itself. Um, you know, like same thing, working out or eating healthier, good examples. Like I want to feel good. I want to look good. I want to live long. I want to have a good life. I want to, you know, be strong enough to do the things that I need to do and want to like feel healthy and, and look healthy. And so I know that I should probably be intentional about the things I eat. I should be intentional about like making time for exercise. I should be intentional about, you know, the exercises I'm doing, all of those kind of things. And anyway, that's unique for me is like, I don't necessarily think about them in habits. I, I tend to start with like, there's something I want and yeah, that's what's drawing me to it. And, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to imagine all the different ways that I can get to that thing that I want rather than I'm constructing a bunch of tiny little different habits. Yeah. No, I think that makes sense. It's probably, that's probably what's more, even if somebody doesn't realize that's how they're thinking about it. That's probably how most people are thinking about it. I want working out and eating healthy is just a great example. Like I want to, everything you said, I want to be, I want to look and feel good. I want to be strong enough. I want to, you know, live a long life. So it's, it's not necessarily that they, that the end goal is like, I want to work out all the time, or I want to eat, um, I I want to eat like particularly healthy foods, like, or I want to eat a restrictive diet. Not that you have to do that to be in shape, but it it usually is like they're thinking you're thinking about the goal. So I, that, that makes sense to me. I I'm, what I've been thinking about lately is just something like if, if I have a, like, let's say you're struggling with stress or anxiety. Um, not necessarily that's, common but like let's say you're not managing stress well which i've i've done at times um you're you almost like you can almost get trapped in a cycle of waiting until you're at like a good enough spot to start the better habits that are that you think are going to get you to a place where you're going to manage the stress well but if you're not if you're not getting if you're not just stopping and deciding no i'm going to change i'm going to change this 
behavior so that I can get to that that spot, you're going to get trapped in this cycle. So I guess I was asking the question kind of like because of that. I think that that's something people struggle with is stress is just a good example. Um, they get trapped in this cycle of stress, this cycle of worry, and they decide like, okay, I'm going to try to change a behavior once I get to a better place. But sometimes changing that behavior is what's going to get you to the better place. And I, I just thought I just think it's an interesting an interesting concept of how you can kind of get trapped in that because it's what the change you're saying you're gonna maybe make once you feel better is what's gonna feel better. It's not a great way to describe it, but that change is what's gonna help you get to the place where you're gonna be more empowered to have better systems in place. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think I've I've certainly experienced like this this delusion, you know of. Hey, there's this thing that I, I I know I should be doing because it leads to like what I want to be doing, and I'll start it tomorrow yeah. rather than right now. Yeah, and like that, that can be a challenging thing. And I think I think that there's this tendency to like try and make this. Uh, you know, you're, you're there's like you're trying to create fanfare around this thing. Like this is you know New Year's resolutions is a great example. Yeah, of this like I'm going to wait until the first, and on the, on the first I'm going to change my life, and it's going to be easier, and uh, like everything's going to be different. It's like no, you can just do that any day. You can literally choose any day to just get started. So one of the one one of the things that kind of plays out, and this is this is maybe where I was going off on the tangent a moment ago, is about like you're trying to manifest yourself, not necessarily just like think about these habits that you want to start. I think that there's a tendency to sometimes think about habits that are positive without having some like bigger self you're trying to manifest. Reading is a great example. Like people latch onto positive habits, you know, sometimes ne negative ones too, but they, they latch onto habits thinking that the habits are going to change their lives without having something they're trying to accomplish. And like, this can be productive sometimes. It's like you're putting good systems in place. But I think what happens is sometimes people allow these have these directionless habits to tyrannize them. So a good example, specific example of this is I want to read more. You know, ultimately, I I just know that I want to read more books and I want to read more books for the sake of saying that I've read more books. It's not necessarily to become more educated or anything like that. But like, yeah, I want to read more books. I know that that's a good habit. OK, well, what happens when your goal is just all you truly care about is reading more books and you find yourself just totally suffering through books that you're reading. You know, you chose a book you're not really enjoying. It's not really fruitful for you, but instead of just like dropping that book and picking something else that's more interesting to you, that's more enjoyable to read. It's more valuable. You force yourself to finish that book. Okay. And, and you do that again, this is just one example of, of how I think people tyrannize themselves is, like you're you're forcing yourself to do this thing because you think it's good, even though it's really kind of counterproductive to to the whole point of reading in the first place. Yeah, it's like yeah. you know you're 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 like forcing yourself to do this thing, and now you've turned this positive habit into something that you're not really enjoying, and it's not really creating a positive spillover effect in your life. And so, anyway, what I bring that up is that I think. I think a lot of people know there are changes that they need to, to to make and they create this sort of all or nothing paradigm in their head of like, I'm going to change this behavior and I'm going to like immediately go all in on it. And I'm like, if I, if I'm not able to see it through, I'm a bad person and blah, blah, blah. And it just like spills over into this thing that causes more stress than it does yeah. create benefit in their life. Yeah. And they like, allow these things to tyrannize them. I honestly think that a better way to form habits. And, you know, I think, I think if you have an extreme willpower and discipline, like you can just like grind it out. Like you can just be like, I'm going to go to the gym every damn day. Even if it's just like, I hate it, you know, until I, I'm going to do it until I love it. I don't think most people have that level of self-respect and self-discipline and willpower. So like the average person out there, I think a better way to go about habits is like, gradually over time doing more of the things that you think you you think you should be doing and then similarly with things you want to stop doing is like gradually over time like abandoning those habits yeah and so that may mean that like yeah i want to read i want to read more because i think that you know it manifests this higher version of myself that we were talking about earlier 
Okay, so I think most people's natural reaction, same thing with like the New Year's resolution or like I'm going to start a new diet or new workout is like, I'm going to jump into it and I'm going to go do it every single day. And I'm going to like kill myself setting unrealistic expectations and tyrannizing myself with this new version of myself I'm trying to impose on myself. Rather than being like, you know what? I think I should read more. Okay, I'm going to find 30 minutes today and I'm going to read a book that I like for 30 minutes. And I'm going to try to do it again tomorrow. But if I don't get to it tomorrow, like I'm going to just try to increase the frequency that I'm doing this. I'm not going to like create some system. I'm not going to, you know, impose this like tyrannical new, uh, you know, uh, system of, of, of laws on myself. It's just, yeah, I'm going to start trying to prioritize the thing that I think is important to me. If, if, you know, you want to do it every day, do it every day. But like, start increasing the frequency of that, um, and 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 don't, you know. Again, I'm not. There's a place for self discipline. I think it's great, but I think because people typically jump into new habits with so much force, they set unrealistic expectations, they burn themselves out, and then their failure rate starting a new habit is extremely high because they're 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 going so hard at the beginning, they're creating a rate that's totally unsustainable. Yeah. Like you have to work your way up to that level of self-discipline. You don't just like yeah. develop it overnight. And that's where I think like this gradual approach is, is, is probably more realistic. Um, you know, if you want to develop a habit is like, just start without even measuring it. Just like try to start doing the thing you want to do more and the things you don't yeah. want to do less. And eventually maybe it becomes something that you, you start to develop some systems around, but like, First, just go, just go do the thing this afternoon. Yeah, no, that's like good. see how it goes. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Well, that's that's all I've I've uh, I've got for today. I think I think we covered some some decent ground. I mean, I'm happy to keep chatting if you have some something you wanted to cover, but I felt like we covered some good topics here. Yeah, I think that's good good time to land the plane, and uh, we'll be back again with another episode. Always a uh, always a pleasure to to get into this. Hopefully, some of it's uh, legible and and actually useful. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs>